to let me know. Should I stay or should I go? Welcome back. Junkies on 106.7 The Fan and on WatchTheJunkies.com. You want to follow along in HD. It's JP Cakes, EB, and Lurch. I, I just saw how <laughs> wide open I had the volume on these headphones. There's not much. Uh, there wasn't much further to go. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're blasting it. I got to stop that, be man. Deaf. You know what I actually learned on my flight back from uh, Cancun? I was I was on JetBlue and JetBlue has you know the TV up and running. Yeah, it's really nice. That extra leg room too for free, and they yeah, don't charge you for bags. What an so. extra inch and a half! I don't know what it is. How much extra they but give you? But I can you. see yeah, why some helps. people like JetBlue. I'm Every little to, bit counts, Cake. You know yeah. what? I'm happy to do endorsements for JetBlue if they ever came. Well, knocking. as am I, of course. Um, but that that's their thing: extra leg room, <laughs> and they give you the free internet and everything like that. Yeah, then we'll play in the clip by saying Cake's going. How much extra leg room? Hey, you know what? What's the, the difference? The last they're trying to sabotage the you. last airline I think we did bits for, they definitely went out of business. Hey, JetBlue number one in my book. Was Independence Air. Ice? Oh, Independence Air. Yeah. Um, yeah anyway, right. I had never seen this Spain show. Air. It's part of uh, Nat Geo, mm-hmm. which I never check out Nat Geo. I don't know if any of you guys ever watched the Nat Geo channel. Yeah, of course. Have you heard of Brain Games? Yes. I have. Kids watch yeah, it all I've the time. I've seen it from time to no. time. And so I found myself watching it for a while, and they just did a quick explanation of hearing. Mm. And they just played sounds. And basically, at our age, you can't hear stuff. I mean, it's just simple that there are follicles in your ear and they just start going away. So maybe you've just lost I more hair follicles in there. Oh, the hurting brain. follicles. Oh, I mean, I, I got some follicles in there right now. I can uh, tell you that. It's because not just that. It's th- this job, I just blasted them into oblivion. They, just, they, 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 they played some tones. They had like 15 people in a crowd. They played some tones and said, Can everybody hear this? Yes. Then they played another tone but loud to me and all the seven year olds couldn't hear it. And then, I mean, it was almost like by decade because Jess was sitting next to me and I asked her to check it out. And she could hear a tone. I've I talked hear. about this. She's in 30s. How could played, you, how, how could you played, check it out? Then they played another tone. You, is it on the website or just on television? They played it's a, a television show and mm. it was running and I checked it out and we both put on the My headphones. My kids love that show. Every day and I then, wake like up. A kid can hear a tone that a well, 20 year old can Hold hear. on. I, I'm sorry. I don't understand. You put on the headphones where? It's a TV show, so you wouldn't have to put on headphones if you're watching on TV. And they run various tests for tons of different so things. Over I have the broadcast, to watch a they test. will broadcast the tones. Yeah. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Every day I wake up and I feel like Lars Ulrich from Metallica. Because <laughs> no, my you. ears ring every day. I they haven't do? gotten it checked out because That's I'm weird. afraid of what the doctor is going to tell me. Your ears ring? That's not good. I probably have tinnitus. What does that mean? He's it means there's constant ringing in my ears. It's from terrible. That's premature hearing loss. Yes. I don't think I have that, but maybe I. Maybe I. It's so constant I don't realize. Yeah. Well, flakes that. does. I'll tell you that. Like, how right do you now. know? How do you know? Like, like, in other words, it could be white noise that I'm living with, and I don't even realize it. Could be. How do you know it's ringing? Usually the ringing. Because I hear it in my brain but, every day. But it also hurts a little bit. Does it hurt? It doesn't hurt. It hurts me sometimes. My ears just hurt. They do. Yeah. I don't have the ringing. I just have. Pain. Just pain in my eardrums. All right, take it. <laughs> We're all, right. all falling apart. Can I uh, can happening. I get into the national signing day here briefly? Yeah, please. Before we get to, uh, I think Neil's coming. And before you right. do that, uh, when I talked about, uh, I think it's Isaiah Prince who's getting re- recruited Isaiah by Prince. Maryland. Yeah, yeah his I thought he was the brother of Damian Prince, right? Who's already at Maryland. Right. Not barely. Re- there's no relation. Not related. Yeah. Okay. Shocking. No relation. Right, well, is like oh for four hundred today. Always on... bet against flakes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, well, Cakes and JP to combine are over 200. Hey, at least I knew Bob <laughs> worst Ryan. Sl- worst slump ever. At least I knew the Bob Ryan we were talking to didn't do a blog for what prep cast sports. Right. That I didn't so, know. So, um, <laughs> obviously, signing day is the biggest off season day for college football. And um, I think ESPN's running 24 hour coverage on this. Let's start with the national stuff first. This is according to scout.com. There are two main. Scouting service that I like to go to, scout.com and Rivals. But this is from Scout. Shocker, Alabama right now currently has the number one class. Now, these change mm-hmm. based on, because there's so many kids that haven't committed yet. Right. But based on the 23 commitments, Alabama is number one in the country right now. They have five five-star players and 13 four-star players. That's sick. I mean, it's just unbelievable. Uh, Tennessee would be two. USC would be three. Penn State having a great year recruiting up there with um, Franklin. With James Franklin. They're number four. Uh, although they don't have a five-star player. They've got 13 four-stars. Ohio State would be five. Notre Dame would be six. Maryland currently is 44 on this list. That sounds and that trifling. Could get, that could get better. 
so we should far, be higher than that, they right? They did get Corvez Bolware from Friendship. He's the big offensive guard who's a four-star player. He, Any relation to Peter Bolware? Or is Bolware, is that last name like, like Jones I'm going to say no. There but are a I bunch of Bolwares running around. I'm going to say cousin. They did get somehow. <laughs> I'll agree Maybe with you. Maybe down the line they're cousins. Yeah. They did get Adam McClain from Quince Orchard, who's well, also they, a four-star. They star. flipped him from Penn State because Penn he had given St- that's right. he gave Franklin a the verbal, verbal to Penn State. And I guess Randy Edsel worked his magic, Swooped in. kept him home. Those verbals. So now he's a defense. Verbals care. mean zippy. So yeah. he's a defense. Oh, I know. That's the big thing. I don't know if you read the article in the Post today about all the flipping, yeah. abnormal flipping that went on this year. Yeah. Right. One kid from Georgia, can't remember his name. Committed to South Carolina and then decommitted. Verbally. Yes. Then committed again to South Carolina and then decommitted well, again. Well, it's a wishy washy 17 year old. And eventually went to LSU. Yeah. Okay. It's tough, man. He's all over the place. I think there's a lot of pressure for these it kids is. to commit early. But I think I think what you're talking about, I could be wrong, but I, I, I feel like 20 years ago, verbal commitments were given more respect by other universities and coaches. And nowadays, people just they, they take verbals for what they are. They're just, it's, Something out of their mouth, you know. Yeah, what I mean, because I mean, they're they're decommitting all the time. I've 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 seen a coach comment before. What, what am I? Just because he said he wants to go somewhere else, I'm not going to recruit him. Yeah, you know. I mean, a kid decommitted from uh, Texas. who was a quarterback from uh, from New Mexico. Pete on sports, and I believe that Texas recruited one quarterback. Right, and that was Loxley's kid. Isn't isn't Kai Loxley a quarterback? He's yes. the one that flipped, right? Well, he's going to Texas. But didn't it, he didn't he verbally right. he verbal say something? Florida off? State, yeah, and Texas yeah, he verbal, flipped him. Yeah, that's right. He verbal to Florida State, and then and Texas has really only been on the scene within the last thirty to forty-five days in terms of yeah. uh, major impact with him. By the way, number one in the country, Byron Coward just chose Auburn over Florida. Wow, wow. shocker! Pete, do you agree? I'm with really me surprised that, going to SEC school. <laughs> that twenty years ago, kid coaches used to re- respect verbals more than they do now. Now it's like nothing. Well, I think if you're a coach, you're a fool to um, assume that a kid verbals to you. But at the same time, let's talk about what has occurred. I was reading a story about a kid uh, just uh, two days ago uh, who appeared to be headed to uh, school A, and then school A two days before signing day withdrew the offer and said, hey, maybe you can uh, go to a JUCO or something and uh, come to us next year. So there's there's give and take now on both sides. And what has happened now, the parents and the handlers of these kids are a lot smarter now than they were 20 years ago when this process w- was completely different. They know how to play that against the coaches, mm-hmm. whereas the coaches have always played this against the players at a lot of the major programs. Yeah. I mean, just... T- Take this, for example. What if a kid is getting recruited hard early and then the parents find out that they're also recruiting another kid pretty hard or two kids at that same position, mm-hmm. right? And they want to bring in three quarterbacks in that class. Of well, that one kid, the first kid who verbaled might say, well, screw that. You're putting in two guys who are going to compete for my job. I'm going to school B. Yeah. No, I, I understand it, of course. All, happens all the time. Absolutely. It's- it's- by the way, Maryland also brought in a kid named E.J. Donahue, who's a big tackle from Linganore High School up there in the Fre- uh, Frederick area. And uh, the one quarterback that committed was Gage Schaefer, 6'7", 200 pounds from Franklin High School. I believe that's West Virginia. You know, has anybody ever gone back? Because, you know, obviously the one thing that you – the caveat you have to give is that you never know how these kids are going to pan out. So it doesn't really matter. I mean, typically if they're highly recruited, they're – probably pretty good kids, pretty mm-hmm. good players. Mm-hmm. Um, but is, does anybody ever go back retroactively and go through, let's say, 2010 I, and then re-rank them, other than Chad Ford, who does that with his NBA draft? Right. Uh, but has anybody ever done that with the colleges and say, okay, Alabama in 2010 had the number one ranked class. How did the how class did, turn out? How did they, yeah, are they? How many are in the NFL? Let's do a retroactive study. Oh, I'm sure they have. Yeah, they do that a lot. I'm sure they They have. do. Yeah. And how often does it coincide? Um, what, would turn, what like the, the number one class is pre- no I don't know how you would evaluate it starters number of guys that started for ten you or, know, or, ten games or, or translated to national championships what, or whatever well, however t- you would do I know it. That the last ten national championships have been uh, have all had top ten recruiting classes mm-hmm. those schools have had all the top ten recruiting classes right so if you're out of the top ten you're pretty much co- you got to get the talent yeah so he, you know Pete on sports. Mentioned Byron Coward going to Auburn. He was the number one prospect, according to rivals. The number two prospect is Josh Rosen. Rosen, Rosen. 
who's a quarterback from Bellflower, California, St. John Bosco. I believe that's the same high school that um, – who went to that high school? Nomar garcia went there, and it's, it's a big baseball school. But he's going to UCLA. And there's a bunch of uncommitted kids, Iman Marshall from Long Beach, California. Did the Think Detmers go to Bosco? No? I'm mean, not I could sure. Be, I'm probably making it up. <laughs> probably made it up. No, because I think you're thinking of Robbie Bosco, who played quarterback at BYU as also. Yeah, that's probably what it is. AB, I'm looking at the top <laughs> 10 here from 2010. They've retroactively... No, I'm just looking at how they panned out. Oh, you're, you're doing the analysis? Okay, good. Well, it looks like maybe two of these guys are in the NFL. Yeah, I don't know that you can base it on the NFL. Well, I, I mean, there some of these guys left the school. Some of them were just okay players. Yeah. yeah. A lot of these guys, I mean, but Ronald if, Powell was the number one recruit that year. Have you ever heard of him? Not since. Nope. Where did he end up going? He went to Florida. Yeah. No, it, it might not translate to NFL, but it certainly translates into you wins. Would, you would think it would translate Bowl wins. To, to games and yeah. starting and that sort of thing. All right, Kyle Troops, uh, last night, Kentucky wins. They are 22-0. and These are the ranked teams that played last night. Uh, Wisconsin beats Indiana, 92-78. Um... Let's see who else played last night. Louisville goes to Miami, wins by eight. Louisville's ranked n- currently ninth. And one other ranked team played last night. Anyway, so tonight, local teams that are playing. Terps are hosting Penn State. All right, that's a win, Mr. Bickle. And Georgetown will host Providence, who they lost to earlier in the year in overtime up there in Providence, 60-57. to 57. That was a game where uh, JT3 came on with us. They went on the road to Providence. Big Probably losers. won't hear from him ever again. And I believe Pete on Sports will be up in Boston because the Naval Academy will play BU in Boston. He leaves today does at, he, well, I think 105 flight. Does he still have snow conditions he has to deal with? What is that? 45 inches of snow up there. <laughs> yeah. does well, not appear as if uh, it'll be a problem today, but my son and them are playing UMass Lowell tomorrow night, which is 30 minutes from Boston, and them getting out of Boston could be a problem tomorrow because it looks like it's supposed to snow again tomorrow afternoon up there. Shocker. It snows all the time up there. <laughs> So have fun up in Boston. Hope you can get back. All right. There you go. Neil Greenberg, That's Washington your Post, joins sports us. Page. He wrote about Marshawn Lynch, Russell Wilson, what the Seahawks have to do, or maybe what they shouldn't do this offseason. We'll talk to him next on The Fan. Only.